Hey, what's up, badass nerdy nerds? Uh, I feel like it's been a long time since I did a video. It says a week since my last video, but I feel like it's been a lot closer to two weeks. And, it, you know, whatever. So, um, a lot of stuff has happened. And this, I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a long video or a short video. It could go either way because I might get pissed off and just want to stop talking because, uh, this stuff that's been happening. So, um, last Thursday, uh, March 23rd, we had a meeting for me with my parents, me, my social worker, um, my nutritionist, the unit manager on my floor, and the wound nurse. But she didn't come to the last second, so she wasn't there for most of it. So, um, through this meeting, they basically blamed my not healing on me, saying I didn't eat enough protein and all that shit. And I was like, well, if you didn't throw out all my shit that I put in the fridge, then maybe I would get enough protein and I would eat more. And they're like, oh, well, it's, it's a health issue and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you don't pay attention to any other, like, state laws, so why should you pay attention to that? Like, that's the one thing that you comply with? Like, really? And... Like, they never like when I say that. It's... Because I'm... I'm very bitchy when it comes to the topic of this place. Uh, this is a living hell. And I am surrounded by demons known to you and others as, uh, CNAs and nurses and, uh, you know, doctors and such, uh, but, yeah, right now I feel like I live in hell, and I, anyway, so the meeting, yeah, so they're just blaming it all on me, they're like, you can't be vegan, so I got guilted into not being vegan anymore, and, um, so that night, well, fast forward to that night, I'm gonna go back and talk about the meeting a little more, but fast forward to that night, my parents took me out, and, um, they took me to dinner, and I, uh, got, we went to Applebee's, and I got, like, this quesadilla burger, it's like a burger inside a quesadilla, it's as unhealthy and greasy as it sounds, and I ate half of it, and I just... Besides the guilt I felt, my body felt bad, um, like, afterwards, the next day, I just didn't feel good about it, and, um, I felt guilty, and, like, meat to me is not even appetizing anymore, so, it, I told my mom, like, the next day, I'm like, I'm not eating meat. I'm not doing it. It's not happening. I will be a vegetarian for as long as it takes to heal my wound. Um, so I'm eating cheese now and dairy and stuff. Uh, I'm not drinking milk though. Like I, I bought a bunch of vegan protein powder and uh they're giving me that now and it's 20 grams of protein a serving and I take it once a day and you mix it with almond or soy milk or even just water if you want and it's really not bad and I had to buy a blender shaker bottle um, just to drink that. So, I still drink, um, m uh, like, milk substitutes because I feel like if I, 
like even milk doesn't sound good to me um i'm a cheese addict so uh that is easy for me to fall back into so yeah cheese was easy to fall back into and so tonight i got pizza and um with vegetables because i i just have no desire to eat meat and i will not eat anything with gelatin in it either because gelatin is disgusting if you actually look up what it contains you probably would not want to eat it anymore but a lot of people that eat meat are just like i don't give a fuck so maybe you would i don't know um so as of now i'm vegetarian and uh so that you know i can try to heal but it's like it's hard to eat enough and and you know have proper nutrition when you're so depressed that you don't even want to get out of bed in the morning and during this meeting we had i i told my social worker and i was like I have no reason to get out of bed any, in the morning. Like, you don't even understand the depression that I am dealing with. Like, you don't get it. And she was like, you do have a reason to get out of bed. She's like, you're alive. And thinking about that, I was thinking about that today. And I'm, I'm like, being alive here is nothing but breathing. That's being alive here in this place is the literal definition of of just existing and being alive, breathing, heart beating, that's it. There's nothing else to get up for. There's nothing, I, I'm just, maybe I'm in a slump or I, I don't know, but right now I'm extremely, extremely depressed and in the meeting, I also um, addressed the fact that the nurse manager mocks me when I tell her that I I don't want to be here. And she'll be like, well, you can leave whenever you want. Like, nobody's keeping you here. And my dad was like, yeah, that sounds like her. It's just snotty and rotten. And she literally, like pretended I didn't say that because maybe I embarrassed her because there was other people in the room you know like higher up than her and all that stuff and and then she completely ignored my father he was like see she she won't even acknowledge it she won't even acknowledge me that's how she is and she was like getting back to the topic at hand and I'm just like that kind of is the topic at hand like this place is hellhole. Like, you mock people instead of, like, and then I got into, you know, me being depressed and how people mocking me instead of trying to raise me up is not helping. Like, and she's just like, <sighs> and it's, it's so true though. I, I feel, I feel like this place is hell and I feel like God is punishing me for being a bad person. And I, I guess I feel like I wasn't that bad of a person. I was promiscuous sometimes, and I, but I would have done anything for my friends, and I still would, and, like, my family, and I just don't get why God decided that, 
that this needed to be in my life for two years or however long it's going to be. And I'm drowning right now. And I, I can't even come up for air. It's one thing after another, like... And this, after this meeting, I was just so distraught. I was crying and I didn't even want, like my parents were gonna take me out or whatever. And I didn't even wanna go. But I ended up going out. And as soon as I leave this building, I feel better. And it's like, that's how, I feel like there are dementors surrounding the building, just sucking the joy from me and my life and everything and like anyone who doesn't get that reference you don't know anything about Harry Potter but like I referenced that to my mom in a text message today and she didn't get it because she thinks Harry Potter and like Lord of the Rings are like the same thing basically <laughs> um so yeah so in this meeting, um, my social worker was trying to, like, you know, explain to my dad, like, that I need to stand up for myself. He's like, yeah, I know she does. She, like, she really does need to stand up for herself. And she's like, even when it comes to you, she needs to stand up for herself and tell you when she thinks that what you're saying is not helping with her life and like what you're doing is not helping her in her life and he's like oh you, you okay yeah okay like like he didn't mean it he never he doesn't mean it he wants to control everyone in every facet of their lives and um so he's like yeah oh okay and I'm like, whatever, Dad. You don't even... So, then we start talking about, like, how I was abused by an aide. And my social worker is, like, comparing it to how I didn't want, like, other aides for other reasons. I was like, she physically abused me. Like, and you're comparing it to me not wanting an aide because... They have a bad attitude. How could you possibly make that comparison? She's like, that's not what I'm doing. And I love my social worker, but in this instance, I'm like, the fuck you're not saying that. That's exactly what you're saying. Don't you dare put those two in the same cate category. Those are... <laughs> those are... Worlds dif different from each other like I and um she was talking about how like again with my dad how he uh basically landed me with this wound because he got rid of the best aide I had who was Crystal and she would have made sure that I never even had gotten the wound in the first place and <clears throat> So we were talking about that and I was like, I never wanted Crystal or Kamisha to be fired. And she was like, no, your father did. And he was like, yeah, I did. She had a bad attitude. And, <clears throat> and, uh, he was like, even you, to my social worker, even you had an instance where you were telling her to do something and you had to fight with her for however long to get her to do it and she was like yes I did but in the end she ended up doing it because she cared about Danielle and she was like and my dad was like so you would rather have her have an aide that knows what they're doing and um like can do the job and but won't listen to her parents and she was like yes that's exactly what I'm saying like this is her life like what why why is it your why why does she have to listen to you like this girl is 29 years old she can tell her aides like 
what they are and are not doing wrong. Why do they have to listen to you? And my dad just like didn't want to hear it, of course, as usual. Like my dad doesn't even care that he's basically the reason that I'm here. And so they got off that topic and they were like, okay, let's just think about the future. And I'm like, I am thinking about the future. I'm thinking about the future when I go home and my dad's trying to dictate who I have as a need again because he doesn't like them. The only re reason that Crystal had a problem with him is because he made derogatory comments towards her on a a regular basis. Every time he was there, he'd say something about her because she was very pretty and she had a very nice figure and he would say things to her. And at one time he called her a bitch. Like, he was saying it jokingly, but it wasn't funny. Like, because she was cold or something and he was like, and we were walking back from somewhere and he's like, this bitch is always cold. And she was like, she flipped out on him, which she had every right to do. I, and to this day, he fucking hates her for that. And, like, she had every right, dude. Every right. And, like, he, in the meeting, he was like, you would think that she would, like, stand up for me and be like, oh, you don't talk to my father like that. But it's like, if I stood up for them and been like, Dad, don't talk to her like that. Then I would be an asshole for saying that to him. You know what I'm saying? And he, he is just, <laughs> he makes me want to kill myself. I'm, I'm not, like, it's a joke, but it's not. Like, another example, the state was here last week, and um, I requested to talk to somebody from the state because of all the shit that goes down here. So I did, and I told them a lot of stuff. I'll probably do a different video about it. So I was telling my dad about how I was telling this guy from the state all the stuff. He was like, wow, no wonder they don't like you there, Jesus. And I'm like, what the fuck do you want me to do? Do you want me to stand up for myself? Or do you want people to like me? Like, wh what do you want me to do? Like, that's, that is what I deal with, with my father. And he changes his mind about what he feels like. You know what he said to me the other day? And I fucking, I almost flipped out because I don't even know how I didn't flip out. I think it was because I was already crying after the, it was right after the uh, meeting and he's bipolar and he was like he was like you have no idea what i have to deal with on a daily basis he's like he's like the things i see you wouldn't be able to handle it uh, what are you f I, d check please are you fucking kidding me are you fucking kidding me is this am i impunct because, like, have you seen what I've gone through for the past fucking seven years? Are you... Je Jesus Christ! Like, that's my dad. That's my fucking dad. And it's like... <sighs> I don't even know. I'm just getting myself really angry and worked up about the shit my dad does and the way he treats me sometimes and the shit he says because he's always had bipolar always and like he had it when we were younger and he knew that and then he thought it like went away he just stopped taking his meds he thought it just went away and like the doctor told him maybe a year and a half, two years ago, that he has bipolar. But he already knew that. But he just thought it went away. 
And so now it's like a whole new thing. And I'm just like, Dad, you've always been bipolar. Like, it's not new. Stop acting like it's new. And, and to, to compare it to my situation is insane. And normal people would understand that, but he doesn't. He's so self-absorbed that he can't even get his head out of his ass to realize that what I'm going through it is exponentially worse than what he is dealing with. Like, I'm not trying to downplay bipolar. I have seen the effects in my father when I was younger. Uh, one day he'd be your best friend, the next day I would I would be hiding in a corner because he terrified me and I was afraid he was going to beat the shit out of me. Uh, so I, like, I'm not trying to downplay bipolar, but um, I think sometimes I might be bipolar because I have these high highs and these extremely low lows and um, it might just be depression and then coming out of depression and um, so I, I'm not trying to self-diagnose myself, self-diagnose and um, like say that I'm bipolar and I know exactly what what people go through when they are because I don't but I have seen what it does to people and as a as a child I I was terrified of my father because I never knew who he was gonna be that day and some some things that he did have scarred me for life uh, I can't hear loud noises they they give me anxiety attacks um, because uh, he <sighs> because he would yell all the time and um, throw things and break things and so loud noises make me think of that and bring me back to a childlike state in which I am just fearful. So if I hear a loud noise, I freak out. And so, yeah. Anyway. I've rambled long enough. I will do another video maybe tomorrow or the next day or whatever um, about what I spoke to about with the state person and about some of the things that have happened in the last week, two weeks, whatever. Um, so yeah, hopefully I will. I might not because you know how I am with YouTube now. So uh, like, subscribe, or don't. Um, I love you, badass nerds, the the loyal ones that watch every day, you know, or every time I post, you know who you are, and uh, much love, and uh, thanks for watching, and peace out.